Good evening, everyone. Tonight I'd like to show you how it's possible to turn an ordinary plain note into something that's really special. So I'll use some different pieces ex as examples and show you the difference between the two, just playing the note and actually making it sound special, and some ideas on how to do that. Because so many people listen in bulk. They listen to the overall bulk idea of a phrase, but they're not listening to the personality and the warmth and the special uniqueness of each individual note. So if I take something like to a wild rose, if I just play the notes, there's no intention with the phrase for the direction, but there's no intention on the unique precious sound that can be drawn from the melodic note that's, that you're going to sing if you were singing it with expression. So how, all, how you do that involves so many different elements, physics, your instrument, your body, and a few props in your mind that you can draw on to initiate the right effect. So let me go a little further into detail on that because I believe in images uh, in creating effect and how they can affect what's coming out of the instrument because I used to rebuild pianos all my life and I know what's behind the fallboard and I think that's a very big part of it. But this lever is sending that hammer up and lopping it into the wire to make a wave that goes through the bridge, it transmits through the bridge to the sounding board and that vibration transmits to the listener. That's one single note out of a voice of soprano, alto, tenor, bass, if you want to bring out the soprano, in a, not just to bring it out, but to bring it out with warmth and tenderness and caring. If it's, it's all about making the piano sing like the singer would sing. And so you've got to turn this percussive instrument into something that sings. And you've got the flesh, the pad of the finger, everybody's got that. You've got the voice, you've got the heart. So if the sound can come through your mind and through, you have to first imagine it and let it come through your heart and out to the listener as a warm, rich, tender, gentle sound, kind sound. You're not going to hit. You see, you can play a key by going <coughs> and hitting and getting an ugly sound, or you can make it sing, make it round. So if you can think of some of the props, you can think of the Empire State Building, and you can think of the ledge, and you can think of, of a coat rack that has little hooks for several different people's coats going along it. You can think of the world for the gravity. You can think of the whole arm like a wet rope that's able to uh, be dripping out of your fingertips. It's so relaxed and heavy. And then you can think of a puff of air coming up that can release your weight on the way up so that gravity can slow it down, allow it to settle over the top, and then accelerate it down. Then you can think of dropping slowly. So you can, you can drop right through. You can think of the ground. You can think of dropping right through to the ground. And if you go right through to the ground slowly, and you can think of the t steel tip. When you're resting on that key, if you take the end of a pencil, and if this was a rubber end on this thing, I'd be tapping it like that and just feel it with the rubber of the, uh, the eraser and just seeing that it's firm like the hook of those hooks that hold up your coat. It's holding up all this weight. I want the key to go down gently by using this weight that drops and being hooked on that. Once I'm hooked, the fingertip can grip and you can grip on the edge of a cliff if you're hanging there for dear life with a very strong hand. Your fingers can be very strong individually, but you're not trying to push that key down, you see. So you have to be able to drop slowly, follow through, and then as you come, you can snap the finger just gently toward you as much as you want. But it's a slow drop right through to the ground, and then it can be on, hooked on there. But it's a weight that's going onto the bottom of that key and just hanging there while the wrist is limpid and movable. And you can take that eraser of that pencil at, and just push on your elbow and see that, see that it falls right back because it's got to be that relaxed. 
So those are the only two places where you've got anything firm, is that steel tip and, well, there's the main arch. It's, gonna, it's not going to be collapsing. You don't want sunken, knu sunken knuckles. But it doesn't mean you have to stiffen your finger to, to, to have that. They can be a lever. It can be balancing. But coming down, you want the key to go down slowly. So, so if it's going to be precious and tender, it has to be doing that through the air that's coming through from your lungs, through your vocal cords, and then over to the next note. So you have to pick up from how, it, how quiet it got. And it's a far different thing than to... There's no feeling in that, but... You have to be so loose in your hands and relaxed that you can follow through. And then keep the tip steel and hang on the hook. Just take that, hook the coat on the hook. And you must count, you must be micro counting everything so that everything fits exactly in the right place and then you get the right length for each note that it's going to hold its own value and beauty and dignity just because you held it the right length. This has been a problem of mine all my life, but when I start to have help from a friend like Natalie Coriati and she shows me the importance of the value of the note, the length of every note, to making the piece sound perfect the way it's written, you don't need to do a whole lot of pulling around and pushing to make it sound beautiful, but, beautiful, but you must make the note sound precious. And then listen to where the next tender note is going to be. So that would be one piece. I could, take, I could take the funeral march. I could do the D flat major part. As long as I fall all the way through to the floor, as long as I have that tip steel, as long as I drop slowly, and as long as that puff of air sends that up and I just come gently. You see, it sings. Now, this second note in the left is not the melody note. There's one, two, three, four. There's where the next melody note comes in that piece. But that very second note in the left hand has to be so quiet so that it can start to go and have a shape too. So, if I got this, that little breath before I play the second note. One, two, three. That breath lets me one, two, three. So you can sing the left hand too, make it in sync with the singer who's singing the melody line. I could take uh, Tristez, I go. So I don't, that was a little push there, so. I gotta be able to get up over to come down in. sing on the top and make the whole phrase have a, long, a length to it and then breathe and then flow into the next phrase and connect the two thinking of where it was where it came from and where it's going to pull it all together I could take the pathetique sonata I can go you see by getting that elbow up in the air but going right through to the floor slowly in your heart because it's going the air that you're singing is passing through your heart through your lungs through your voice to the listener and in this case through all of this mechanism and that mechanism and the vibration over to the listener to make it a complete cycle uh, let's see if there's anything else Claire de Lune if I go if I go I must count it I must count that's a dig for Sandra she'll know what I mean I must count up to nine in every bar one two, three, four. See, it's syncopated. It starts with a rest the first time. So I can go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, one. Each one of those three 
in each third of the bar can be a conducting thing like saying triple trip. So triple triple triple. But it helps to think of that little puff of air if you're up on the uh, Empire State Building and you're out on the ledge and a puff of air comes underneath you and down you go straight to the ground. You can slow that descent down in your mind and it'll come down slowly but it's to get yourself in a position where the grip is not going to be forcing the hammer up into the wire. You're going to be hanging on it and then you can hang on with as much grip as you want without stiffening your hand of course but freely balancing on that key left and right and like a boat rocking on the tip of the finger, on the pad of the finger. But it's the speed you come in is the tenderness, the emotion of that sound that, that's going to come out of the piano. So if I want one, two, three, four, five. So one and two and three and four and five and six and seven, eight, nine, one, two, three. See, everything has a place in time. It's a grid work. It has to be very mathematical, just like a graph. You have to... You have to picture it like a graph. Everything has to be spaced properly. And you'll find you don't need as much rubato as you thought you did then. It's going to sound beautiful. So let's see if there's anything else here. Um, what if I do um, the Nocturne Chopin? Do? Everyone, slowly, if I could go or one, well, I'm thinking of, um, there's no bubbles on that piano. See how slow it has to be? one you have to be thinking about melting the listener's heart with the beauty of the sound and so every note has to be that precious if I'm doing um, uh, Jesu Joy of Man's Desiring that note even though it's a quiet octave it still has to be precious so <laughs> see just gentle and I have to be singing. I'm not singing one, two, three, one, two, three, one, I'm one, two, three. So a little bit of a pause on that one and then get going. One, two, three, one, two, three, one. But don't speed it up there. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, one, two, three, one, two, three, one. You just melt into it because every note is special. Um, if there's any other one, um, the um, uh, Chopin, uh, no, the Liszt Constellation. You see that first note has got to be special. Yeah. If I took um, Tremorai, the very first note, I want it to be special. I want it to sound precious. So I've got to get that puff of air under there, and it's all got to be coming down because then it's all my relaxed body. It's not just part of it, it's all of it. So just lift it. From practicing on the piano, you start to realize just how much of a snap you need toward your stomach as you're dropping slowly. But this tip has got to be steel. And I, two, and three, and
every note, you have to care about how you're coming down into it, how you're melting down into it to go to the floor. But at this point, there's a little bit of magic has to happen. And you have to be able to use the wrist, the movement of the wrist, rotation, the freedom of the wrist, the limpidness of the wrist. All these things have to come into play. But you have to be able to get over the next note while you're still hearing what the first one was and listening for where the next one has to be in context with where the first one was. And then where is that going in the next, to the next note? And it just makes playing so much more fun than just playing the notes. You know, I could play, or I can come in. Just, it sings, it floats. It doesn't go, it's not pushed, it's not, I'm not pushing the key down, I'm not pressing the note down. I'm dropping weight onto the key, but following through to the, fl to the ground, but then the coat hanger and the grip just gently takes that weight. It allows me to be leading over to the next, to the next. It allows me to link my notes that this one is down, without the pedal. That finger has to come off once this note is down, once I've transferred the weight laterally to this, through this dropping, to this, to this, and bottom, down into, the, then to there. I, if it's the end of a phrase, I can come off and breathe, and then. And that wouldn't be good. I have, to, I have to link it, and then, and when it's linked, it's going to sound smooth and beautiful. And uh, those are some of the ideas that you that you need to be thinking about when you do. Uh, you see, each one has to be. If this is precious, to make that one precious, if I just think of that little puff of air before I do that note, it gives me. gives me the room to make it vibrant and alive and wanting to go somewhere and you wanting to take the listener somewhere with it. And what it all amounts to is that you're taking the listener into a different world when you can do that. You're not just taking it by playing notes nowhere. It just stagnates. When you can make the magic and make the people that are listening be part of that magic because they feel for you and they feel for the music and, it, and then they feel inside of them. And, it just pulls back memories for them. It pulls back uh, what is beautiful in the world. So anyway, I hope that gives you a few ideas when you're practicing that helps you to listen when you're playing and know what you want to feel with every single note because every note is precious. Every note matters. And every note has to go somewhere and link and connect. So ideas for you. Have a good night now. Bye-bye.